Let's take a look at question number 7 of the official guide for GMAT 2015 in its DS section. This question asks us whether m plus 1 is an odd number. But put another way, we can say that n is equal to an, some odd number minus 1, and that's actually an even number. So the question is asking us whether n is an even number. So in this question, we have one variable, which means we only really need one equation to solve for this one variable. Okay, now let's look at the conditions independently. Condition 1 gives us one equation. Condition 2 gives us one equation as well. So, mathematically speaking, the chances that D is our answer is high. Okay, let's verify that. In condition 1, n plus 2 is an even number, which means that n is equal to some even number minus 2, which is still an even number. So indeed, n is even, just as this question asked, and this is sufficient. What about condition 2? It says that n minus 1 is equal to odd number. So n is equal to some odd number plus 1, and that's an even number. So again, condition 2 is sufficient, and we can answer the question with that too. So as a result, D is our answer. This type of question, the probability that D is our answer when there's only one variable is quite high. And this sort of approach in problem solving is called the variable approach method, which is nowadays the most proven, efficient, and quick method of solving GS, DS math problems in the GMAT section.